So you've been lucky enough to get hold of one of these Dolgot conversion kits. I aren't brave enough to use it on your model. Well, don't worry. Let me destroy my £100 model so you don't have to destroy yours. <laughs>
is secured by a factory adhesive for the plastic cab to the metal bodywork and a rocking motion should eventually result in the cab coming apart. However, I found that the adhesive was very strong um, and I sat there for quite some time rocking the cab backwards and forwards and it, it just wasn't going to go. So in the end, I broke it off. There's two lugs that go from the cab into the bodywork. They snapped off, but it's not the end of the world because there's a 3D cab to replace this. You're not going to use this cab. Um, you can clean the lugs out of the holes afterwards because you will need that to put the 3D cab in. Now, you can see here, I'm trying to remove the chassis. Again, it was just a rocking motion in the end to get it to release from the two lugs on the back. Um, but once you've done that, it's quite easy to just pull apart. Um, but you don't want to over grip the wheels and the motion because that's just going to result in damage. And that's sort of a natural temptation to do that when you're trying to pull apart. So it's just very, very gently rocking that chassis out. So you can see here, I've finally got all the parts separated. Um, and I'm just demonstrating in the video there that I've broken the cab off in the end. You can see the two plastic lugs there, that little white specks just behind the dome where they've snapped off and remain in the holes on the die cast body. And they just needed drilling out at the end with a pin vise uh, and a file just to clean in the holes so you can fit the new cab in the future. Um, so the next job would be to strip the paint and remove uh, Renius's face. Uh, so certainly uh, not a scene for any Thomas fan, but um, the face does need to come off if I want it to look realistic. So to strip the model, I've removed the other plastic pieces, the plastic handrail and the whistle up here. So that is now all clear of plastic, apart from the lugs that won't come out, because this stuff will melt plastic. Apparently it is safe to remove it from it, but you can't keep it on there for too long. So it's a Dulux material strip magic. I've got some wood to work on because I don't want it melting my uh, cutting board either. I've used stuff like this before. It is quite volatile sometimes. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit and work by holding it on, holding the funnel because I don't need to strip that because that's gonna be cut off. I'm just gonna apply a little amount. I've got this old brush here. See, there we are, it's starting running down the body already. And I'm just gonna start Coating that all over. It took a while, a um, bit of scrubbing, but I got there in the end, that's now stripped of paint. Uh, use various tools to clean it off, toothbrush, wire brush, just be careful with the briar brush, you don't want to tarnish the surface. Um, but the wire brushes mostly get the black paint out of the coal. Uh, as I say, I've left it on the chimney because that's going to get cut off. Um, and otherwise, yeah, this is uh, ready to go on to the next part of the project. Right then, so, all cleaned up. First job, to remove the funnel. That is now the body, uh, well, I said the smoke box. Filed down with the chimney removed. I've got that to the curvature of the rest of the smoke box. So next job is to add the chimney, the replacement chimney, which is this part here. If you didn't know what a chimney with a locomotive looked like, very patronising of me. Um, so it's a 1.5 millimetre hole, got going the centre line here, so I'm going to use the holes for the handrails as a guide, and then measure the distance between there and mark that out, and then drill the hole in there.
Well, there we go, I have the chimney in place. Uh, now, it said use a 1.5mm drill bit. The chimney didn't quite fit in, so I used a 1.6 in the end. Um, and then I noticed when I put the chimney on, I don't know if it's my poor drilling accuracy, which is quite poor, um, or it was just maybe it was just the shape of the chimney because it needed a little bit of work to get the base to fit round the smoke box. Um, but when I sort of looked to see if it lined up with the dome, it was definitely leaning that way. So I fretted the hole a little bit more. So the chimney's a bit wobbly now. That's going to need a bit of super glue to hold it in place. But that is the chimney, which let's face it, is so much better than this. I mean, that, that's just a pin. Um, so that's in place. Uh, next job, I believe, is to work on the footplate. But I'll read the instructions before I do that. And I was right, that was the next job. So, the next job is, as I say, the foot plate. Uh, I've got to remove the splashes, and then we have replacement splashes. They're actually in this 3D printed cab, which is quite clever. So there's the air pump, smoke box door, and then the splasher there, and a splasher there. How I remove them from there is a bit more interesting, because uh, I don't want to damage the cab. But uh, I'll suss it, I'm sure. But first things first, removing these. Right then, that is the uh, splashes removed and the floor has now been uh, filed down, so it's flush. Uh, I've removed the splashes, the new ones, from the cab, along with the smoke box door. Uh, so it all just, there was one little spur and it cut out and then it all comes out to one piece and you just cut them separately. Unfortunately, as I tried to remove the splashes from this spur here, my knife just clipped the smoke box door, so it's got a little chip in it now. Which is very annoying but I think a bit of filler should hopefully solve that problem so I've tried to test fit the splashes um, I believe this one sits on top and then this one either goes underneath or just sits flush um, so they do two different styles of splasher uh, now I've tried fitting that in there it doesn't quite fit uh, and then looking underneath, there is still a bit of an angle on both ends from the original splasher. So I think I need to file that back and that should hopefully fit in place. So, as you can see, I have now filed the hole big enough to fit the splasher. Bring that back under the camera so it doesn't wander off over here. Um, so I'm just doing a test run with the boiler, just make sure everything fits. And as you can see there, the boiler just catches on the splasher. And if you, you now that's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> Pop that back in. But if you look there, you see there's just a little bit of overhang from the splasher to the footprint. I don't know if you can see that on this camera. So I just need to file this hole here just a little bit more that way I think this is literally the same size as the splasher so there was uh, obviously um, a plastic line here where I'd filed it flush but I think you just need to file back a bit more just to get that to fit in so that's what I'm going to do so there you go as you can see I've just filed that back just a little further and now it all fits together so I've got to do the same for the other side and then I'll probably read the instructions to work out how that's going uh, underneath or flush with the footboard. Um, and I'm going to check that before I start doing it because obviously I don't want to let the hole too big and then find out it has to go flush. So, here we are. I've put this uh, splasher on. It does indeed sit flush. And just sits in a recess there and then it's a very very tight clearance between the wheel and the splasher so that's why it's on here just testing to make sure 
So we're going to catch, and she doesn't. So I'm happy with that. I'm now going to glue these onto the foot plate. Um, and probably just you get a little bit of model filler just to uh, put around the edge, just to tidy that up and sand it down. All right, so I've uh, just added a little bit of um, filler. It's the um, Squadron Products uh, Grey Putty. It's my, my favourite filler. I recommend it. It's as much as an endorsement I'm going to give that, that's all it needs. Just, if you want a filler, that's the one. Um, so, I'm just letting that dry off. Next job, according to the instructions, is the cab. So, obviously that's the original. This is the new one. Um, there is a slight difference. Uh, you know, the, the uh, driver windows are larger on this one. Um, uh, Renius's cab had a curved top. This one's got a square. Um, that's the back again. The windows are slightly larger. So, you know, it's not much difference, but I think once this has the um, overlays put on it, it's going to look a lot better than this. So the instructions say that I need to remove any other um, additional parts, which in this case I think is just this pump, and then just remove these two struts here, and then try to attach the cab uh, to the bodywork. Now I've already had a little test fit. And I can see that these two lugs don't quite fit in these holes, which I've also cleaned out. So if you recall, when I took the cab off, I ended up snapping the two lugs and they would, because they were just stuck in there. They were not coming out. Um, I had to drill these out in the end um, and just sort of get a knife in there and sort of dig them out. That took me a good 10, 15 minutes to clean those two lugs out. So if you are doing this kit, um, I know the instructions just say to wiggle this until the adhesive comes loose, but you may just have to, as I did, snap the lugs to get it off. So, yeah, they're only filing down a little bit, and then that can fit on there. And you got this, um, it's, in, it's described in the instructions as a bulge on the cab. I'll just put it that way, as you see. See it on there. Um, so that needs to sit just above this bunker here. Now, this bunker's always got a coal load at the moment. Uh, now Dolgok doesn't have a coal load on that side, so that needs filing down as well. So I've got to file that down, file that down, clean these out, and then hopefully that should all go together. I, don't, I think that <clears throat> is the bulk of the model then done. I think you've got to put the overlays on this. And after that it's all these lovely little detail parts that I'll have no idea what's what and where it goes, but I'll worry about that later. taken me all night I think just to file that down but I've got the coal uh, fairly flush I think it's still a little raised but honestly I, I think I've been filing that for about 45 to minutes to an hour just to get it flat so that's not been fun uh, so I'm gonna leave that for this evening and I'll come back to this loco uh, later on well after copious amounts of filing uh, I finally got this coal load flat I've uh, had to file the lugs here, so they'll fit into this, and then I had to file this down again, obviously realign this splasher here, just so that all goes together. But now, I'm just going to show you this. Pops in there nicely. Now I did shave the lugs with um, uh, my knife very, very gently. Obviously I don't want to break them, nothing too forceful, just very gentle shavings, and then just sanded it off. Um, now you need to make sure that your two holes here are clear because there are two lugs on the bottom of the 3D print. So it goes together like that, back in like that, those two sit in there. And that is the main bodywork. So the next part is to put these etched overlays on the 3D cab. So I've uh, filed down the filler, but I'm not happy with this splasher. 
Um, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but yeah, it's uh, got a slight angle to it. So I'm going to remove it, just pack in a bit further here and reapply. Right then, so I've, uh, as you can see, glued all the bits in position. I've just got a bit of filler underneath the chimney because it was a bit of a gap under there. So I'll just file that down once that's dried. Um, so the cab, I don't know if you can see this, but I have numbered up all over. So that is because uh, instructions have the numbers for the various plates on this sheet. So number four, goes there, number five is there, which is that one, number six, which is here, and it has a little hole here, then you've got the water filler cap, which is number seven, that goes on the top of that, so six and seven are on there, number eight is these two on the sides of the cab, and then when you get to um, nine and ten, this all depends on the era that you want to model, so if you want to do a um, original build, a Dolgok, then you need to go for 9A and 10A, or if you want to go for a rebuilt model for uh, later years, then you need to go for the uh, 9B and 10B, because 10B has the coal load that you can wrap around. So I've done that so I don't get myself all confused and put things in the wrong place. Uh, 11 and 12 go on the top, so that's the roof, and then I believe that is the, uh, the sunroof, so to speak. And then these other two are number one and number two, they need to go on the splashes. So I'm going to start applying the plates. But it was while I was recording here, a problem occurred. Do you remember me mentioning a tin for safekeeping of screws at the beginning of the video? Well, I had a little problem with it. I've got a bit of a disaster here. It's all gone a bit wrong. As I tried to add this uh, small piece here, piece number seven. Uh, I knocked this tripod, which had my phone on it at the time, over, which in turn knocked this on the floor. Uh, I've managed to find four of the five screws, but I can't find the other one. Sod's bloody law. So I can find four of the screws, but I can't find this last one, so I need a magnet. So this guy, he's gonna help. Because he's very good at picking up the screws. Oh, it's somewhere in this carpet. But even with Thomas's help, it was no good. And having to leave for work, I had to walk out defeated. Join me next time to see if I actually find that screw. Continue with the build and model the cab interior. If you have liked the video, then please click like. And if you want to see more episodes, then please click subscribe. Thanks for watching.